Welcome to Bible Answers for Today, where we talk about God's creation and how to defend our faith. We're in a four-part series called Mankind, God's Greatest Creation. In part one, we discuss the incredible human body that defies evolution. In part two, we expose the myth of junk DNA. In part three, we debunk the so-called 2% DNA difference between humans and chimpanzees. And in this final session, we're going to talk about the fossil record. Does it support or prove humans evolved by naturalistic processes? And our challenge question for this series has been, did humans really evolve over millions of years by naturalistic processes, or were we created by an all-knowing, all-powerful Creator God? The common perception is that the fossil evidence supports humans evolved from ape-like creatures. The idea has been promoted with charts and textbooks depicting human evolution. Let's just take a look at the facts. Piltdown Man, discovered in 1912 in Piltdown, England. What was found? Fragments of a human-like skull, jawbone fragments similar to apes, and several teeth. It was claimed to be 500,000 years old. The New York Times ran an article then, Darwin Theory is Proved True. The scientific community celebrated the discovery as the long-awaited missing link between ape and man. For over 40 years, Piltdown models were displayed around the world and taught in schools as proof of human evolution. Well, let's look at the rest of the story. In 1953, the newspapers reported the real story. Piltdown Man was a hoax. The teeth had been filed down to make them appear human-like. The bones had been chemically stained to make them look old. The Piltdown forgery had fooled many of the best scientific minds. How could this happen? It's through wishful thinking and a strong commitment to evolution. Zenjanthropus, discovered in 1959, what was found? Portions of a skull, jawbones, and some teeth. It was claimed to be 1.75 million years old. An article in the National Geographic claimed it to be the earliest man yet found and obviously human. The rest of the story. In 1961, two years after the discovery, Zenjanthropus was downgraded. It was just another ape-like creature. Rambopithecus, discovered in 1932. It was claimed to be over 12 million years old. What was found? A few teeth and some fragments of a jawbone. Time Magazine in 1977 ran an article. Rambopithecus is ideally structured to be an ancestor of hominids. If it isn't, we don't have anything else that is. Well, the rest of the story. A baboon living in Ethiopia was found with a very similar jaw and tooth structure. As a result, Rambopithecus was dropped from the human evolution line. It was just another ape. Once again, a case of imagination and false information. Lucy, one of the famous Australopithecines, was found in Ethiopia in 1974, considered to be one of the first in line to be human. Less than 40% of the fossil was found. It was claimed to be 3.2 million years old and claimed she could walk upright. Well, the rest of the story. Lucy stood 3 feet 6 inches tall, the same size as a chimpanzee. The skulls of Australopithecines are very ape-like. The brain size is estimated to be one-third the size of humans. Lucy's pelvic bone was identical to a chimpanzee, meaning it did not walk upright. The fingers are long and curved like an ape. The wrists are locking wrists for knuckle walking like apes, not humans. The rib cage was cone shaped like an ape, not barrel shaped like humans. The feet of Australopithecines are like apes and not humans. The arms are long and the legs are short like an ape. A new analysis shows that Lucy's upper limbs were heavily built, similar to tree climbing chimpanzees. In other words, Lucy looked like an ape, she walked like an ape, and she was the same size as a chimpanzee. The fossil evidence indicates that Lucy was simply an extinct ape and not a human ancestor. Neanderthals, first discovered in 1856. The original drawings were very ape-like, making it look pre-human. The rest of the story. They made jewelry. They used musical instruments. They buried their dead, much like modern funerals. They were capable of speech. Their brain capacity was slightly larger than the average human today. They made advanced tools. They had certain physical characteristics like a thick brow ridge and wide nasal cavity. However, nothing in their anatomy differs from human abilities today, and even their DNA is within the human range. Neanderthals are another example of artistic imagination 
and an uncritical commitment to evolution rather than good science. All these discoveries have shown that Neanderthals were fully human, descendants ultimately from Adam and Eve. Homo erectus, meaning upright man or upright ape man, they are claimed to have lived between 1.9 million years ago and 143,000 years ago. Well, the rest of the story. They are identical to Neanderthals except smaller in size. From the neck down, they resembled an Olympic power athlete of today. The scientific analysis has shown they are completely human. Homo erectus is just another case of evolution imagination. Ida, a more recent discovery, discovered in 1983, 95% intact, dated to be about 47 million years old. The newspaper headlines, Fossil Ida, Extraordinary Find is Missing Link in Human Evolution. The rest of the story. 100 days after that great announcement about Ida, it was revealed to be another blunder. Ida was identical to a modern lemur. In 2007, a new discovery was made in Morocco. The New York Times just recently ran an article, June 2017, oldest fossil of Homo sapiens found in Morocco, altering history of our species. It's claimed to be 300,000 years old. Well, let's do a little critical thinking about what was claimed. How many times will they have to alter or rewrite human history? And how can we ever know to teach the correct history if it keeps changing? Words like suggest, researchers believed, estimated, must have been occurred throughout the article, indicating a lot of assumptions and not real facts. The article states their brains differed in fundamental ways. How did they know this? No brains were found. It looks like another case of mistaken identity. Conclusion, the track record is an initial claim of a new fossil find that proves evolution and later the fossil is downgraded or dismissed. In every case, Gaps in what was found are filled in by extrapolation, imagination, and a commitment to a worldview and not good observational science. In every case, the fossil evidence that has been used to prove evolution and discredit the Bible has been proven to be false. We can always go back to the original facts found in the Bible. And let's go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, where it reads, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. And then we go to Psalm 100, verse 3, for more facts. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Yes, we were fearfully and wonderfully made by an all-knowing, all-powerful Creator God. Our online videos are free for anyone to view or download. However, it does take finances to continue producing these programs. If these lessons have been helpful, you might consider supporting the Ministry of Creation Training Initiative. You can mail a check to CTI, Post Office Box 2415, Eagle, Idaho 83616. Or you can go to our website, creationtraining.org, and make your donations that way. Your donations of $20, $100 or more will enable us to continue to share the good news of God's Word worldwide. As it states in Jeremiah 32, 17, Ah, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. There is nothing too hard for you. Thank you and God bless.